Hello, I'm Seb and welcome to The Gamer's Garden. Before the days where gamers all had the internet, we may do with magazines to get our gaming news and journalism. There are a ton of these over the years. A single console could support multiple publications. I love getting games magazines since I was growing up, and my all-time favourite is the official Sega Saturn magazine. It was well designed across several styles during its run, had a great team of charismatic writers, and got excellent access to Sega and some key Saturn developers. But one of my favourite aspects about the magazine now is how many upcoming games were reported and in some instances previewed or reviewed that would sadly never see the light of day. Yes, the Saturn's low market performance has been well documented and these never completed games are a part of that story. So in this series of videos, we'll be going through the entire publication run of official Sega Saturn magazine and shining a light on every game announced for the console that I believe never saw release. The launch issue 1 for November 95 marked the point where the official Sega magazine became the official Sega Saturn magazine. The Saturn had been on UK shelves since early July, so the former magazine had covered the launch and the first wave of games. Issue 1's masthead displays the Saturn logo and typeface, and the image leads with the upcoming Virtua Fighter 2 Saturn port due for Christmas 96, but this was not a pre-rendered image as we'll get used to seeing. It looks like an upscaled screenshot of the arcade game. The inside page sets out the state of the console as of its publication. The second wave of games is incoming and they would turn out far superior to its launch titles. The launch issue also came with a preview VHS tape, quite a few games, and my copy looks like it would still work if I had a working VHS player. We can infer the comparison is made to the PlayStation here, and it's fair to say that although the Saturn had a bad launch, it was not sealed that the PlayStation would destroy everything in its path as of mid-95. The launch issue contents still include a Sega magazine space to cover the 16-bit game still being released, and the big story is of course Virtua Fighter 2. It's on pages 22 to 24 that we get our first unreleased game of Sega Saturn magazine, Indy 500. This was a 95 AM1 racing game that was projected to use the in-development Model 3 arcade board, but delays in its completion led to this game using Model 2 instead. Some special edition Virtua Racing cabinets were converted to multiplayer Indy 500 setups, and I vaguely remember one of these being in the basement of the Trocadero, although I may be getting that mixed up with a Virtua Racing setup. As announced here, a Saturn version was apparently planned but would be scrapped in early 96, and it's thought to have evolved into Daytona USA Championship Edition. But that was by Sega CS, a separate team, so I'm not sure how accurate that is. Indy 500 did not complete development on the Saturn and due to this had no port on a home console. A double page spread on pages 28 to 29 previews Deadly Skies, the first of many games we'll see that were announced for both PlayStation and Saturn but were cancelled on the latter while seeing release on the former. Produced by Funcom, who were gone to make Impact Racing for the Saturn, Deadly Skies was announced for the 3DO as well, but that also failed to materialise with the game only seeing release in Japan on the PlayStation. Sega Saturn Magazine reports that the Saturn version is around 80% complete, being published in the West by JVC, but doesn't specify that the gameplay is free roaming, and gives the impression that Deadly Skies would be a forward-moving, afterburner type game. That's it for issue 1, only two unreleased games, so not bad, on to the next issue. Issue 2 for December 95 leads with a pre-rendered image of James Cools from Virtual Cop, a big Saturn release that would hit just in time for Christmas, alongside a cover line for the first review of the Virtual Fighter 2 that would sadly slide into January. The contents show the issue has a good selection of reviews, and we still have the 16-bit section covering excellent Mega Drive games like Earthworm Jim 2 and Fantasy Star 4. Although not an unreleased game, the editor's letter by Sam Hickman gives us a glimpse of what was hoped and expected at the time but would fail to materialise for the Saturn. Third party developers clambering over each other to release on Saturn first, all of Cygnosis top titles for the next two years being ported, Wipeout being just as good as on PlayStation and European product and marketing director Barry Jeffrato saying that 95% of all PlayStation games will appear on Japan. It simply, sadly, didn't happen like this. Page 8 includes the first of many times we'll see excitement about the often expected, once confirmed by Yu Suzuki himself, 
but sadly not to be Virtua Fighter 3 port for the Saturn. Looking back, it was very optimistic to think that Virtua Fighter 3 would see release on the Saturn, but the hype and drip feeding began here, and as a reader, this would be more than enough to set an expectation that would not be met in the future. As of this issue of Sega Saturn Magazine, they're saying that the arcade version is four to six months away, with the Saturn port no doubt a few months after that. We will be coming back to Virtua Fighter 3 a lot in the coming issues. On page 10, we get a half page news piece on the upcoming port of IndyCar 2 to the Saturn. IndyCar Racing 2, unrelated to Indy 500 from issue one, was a good looking PC racing game that was unusually announced as having a Saturn port that was later canceled without any fuss. Papyrus Design Group were its developers and had a strong track record of IndyCar racing games, so perhaps this was a sad loss for the Saturn. The news piece includes a few screenshots and says they are the first look at actual Saturn shots, but I don't quite believe that. They clearly look just like the screenshots from the PC game, so they're likely to be of that version. That's two unreleased games for issue two. On to the next one. Issue three for January 96 leads with a pre-render and main cover line for Sega Rally, regarded by many in the magazine as the best Saturn game while it was on sale. The showcase includes Guardian Heroes, and the 16-bit Sega magazine section has already gone by this third issue. Depending on what version of the magazine you got, you could have had the bootleg sampler, the first demo disc Sega Saturn magazine would include. You don't get much when compared to what official UK PlayStation magazine offered with its monthly demo disc, but you've got quite a few games to try, including the cover game Sega Rally, and a few more to watch as a preview. The only cancelled game I could find in this issue is on page 15, Clockwork Knight Puzzle. This would later be known as Clockwork Knight Penguin War, a top-down puzzle action game that looks a bit like Bomberman. Clockwork Knight was of course a quite weak mascot for the Saturn, with two 2D platform games coming out very early. A release of this was expected in early 96 in Japan, but that failed to be. A prototype of the game did appear in 2006, so if you're interested and have the kit to do so, this is a cancelled game you can actually try out. In the report here it says the name will probably change, as it did. You can play as up to four players, and a February or March 96 launch is likely, with a UK release two months later. On to issue four. Issue four for February 96 leads with a lovely pre-render of Jean-Luc Lundy and Lagi from the upcoming Panzer Dragoon Zwei from Team Andromeda. The original Panzer Dragoon was the standout launch title from a technical perspective, and the sequel was very highly anticipated. We also have a cover line for Street Fighter Alpha, an early-ish game that would prove how capable the Saturn was at running ports of the best 2D arcade games. There's also a mention of a new Sonic game. The contents are packed with quite a lot of reviews, although none of them are very exciting, and there's an interesting Sega Rally interview on page 42. On pages 6 and 16, we get the first real Sonic the Hedgehog coverage of the Sega Saturn era. This particular news report is on AM2's upcoming Sonic the Fighters, or Sonic Championship depending on region, a game made out of Yu Suzuki seeing one of his team playing with a Sonic model in Fighting Vipers. They needed Yuji Naka's approval. After seeing how smooth the animation was, he granted it. The Saturn release was reported as being late 96, and apparently at E396, a Squaresoft employee was given a private demo of a new Saturn development kit and saw a Saturn version running, but nothing has ever been released or leaked of this version. Sega Saturn magazine expected the Saturn conversion to be happening while the arcade version was being finished. Page 6 also has the first mention of a real 3D mainline Sonic game that would not eventually appear on the Saturn. An unspecific Saturn Sonic project is announced, with Naoto Oshima heading development as a Team Sonic release. But as we now know, Oshima was working with Yuji Naka on Nights at the time, and the screenshots here look to be more Sonic the Fighters shots. Exactly what was or wasn't announced here is unclear, and it doesn't seem to relate to the cancelled Sonic Extreme, a game we'll see more of in the coming issues for 96. And that's it for the unreleased games of issue 4, just the Sonic games, and that's it for this episode. It's fairly early days still for the Saturn in the UK, and magazines for every console would cover some games that would never be finished or released. My main feeling from these first four issues is that we've already had mentions of two big games that would have been tentpole releases for the Saturn, a Sonic game 
and Virtual Fighter 3. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you did, and join me in the next episode for more unreleased games of Sega Saturn magazine.